Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Joan Fontaine in Evangeline on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we tell you a story which is part of our history, Evangeline, which Longfellow wrote just over a hundred years ago. Many of us remember it from our early days, and there is indeed a springtime freshness in the lilt of its lines. But it's the story itself that has always been popular, the tale of Evangeline, which, with its simple pathos, stands as a tribute from one of our greatest poets to those early days when America was not yet a country but was already the proving ground of heroes and heroines. Such a heroine was Evangeline, and to play her part, we have chosen one of Hollywood's loveliest and most distinguished actresses and an Academy Award winner, Joan Fontaine. And now here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. One of the particular joys of Christmas is sending and receiving Christmas cards. While the pleasure Christmas cards bring can never be measured, isn't it good to know that Hallmark cards are priced the same this year as they were last year, and the year before, and the year before that? And that the quality of Hallmark cards has constantly improved throughout the years? Yes, today, just as for many Christmas seasons, that Hallmark on the back of your card is looked for and welcomed. It tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's Evangeline. Starring Joan Fontaine. A continent is the stage of our story, and yet a continent cannot contain the spirit and soul of Evangeline. Her travels are over now. The search is done, and she smiles faintly as she rests by the warmth of her hearth in the friendly city of Quakers. Her eyelids close, and her mind slips back along the years to times long past. And the troubled events of her childhood in the miracle of remembering take on the measure of poetry. This is the forest primeval, the murmuring pines and the hemlocks, bearded with moss and in garments green, indistinct in the twilight, stand like druids of eld with voices sad and prophetic. In the Acadian land, on the shores of the basin of Mina, distant, secluded, still, our little village of Grand Pre lay in the fruitful valley. Good evening, Father Felician. Good evening to you, Monsieur Belfontin. I pray that all things go well on your farm. My harvest is good, my daughter is beautiful, and my prayers of thanksgiving rise to the heavens like the straight blue smoke from my chimney. That is the voice of my father, the wealthiest farmer of Grand Pre. Neither locks had we to our doors, nor bars to our windows. Our dwellings were open as day, and the hearts of their owners. There the richest was poor, and the poorest lived in abundance. Evangeline? Yes, Father? There's a young gentleman here to see you. Gabriel? I, I believe that is the young fellow's name. Oh, oh Gabriel. Hello, my love. Oh, Gabriel. 
Have you asked him? This lad brings me the most preposterous news. He says he's in love with you. And shall be, as long as I live. Oh, he has the odd notion you might have him for a husband. <laughs> Is this true, Evangeline? If my father will give us his blessing. My blessing? How can I give you again what you have had all your lifetimes? Since you played together as children and the Lord smiled upon you both, my blessing has been with you. Your father, Gabriel, is my oldest friend, and Evangeline is the image and the soul of her mother. What could please an old man more than to add his dowry and blessing to those the Lord has already blessed? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Monsieur Belfontaine. Who is there? Come in. The door is not locked. I wish to speak with a man called Belfontaine. I am Benedict Belfontaine. I am Captain Morrison in the service of His Britannic Majesty. Oh, a stranger indeed, but no less welcome. What is your message, Captain? I prefer to speak with you alone. Uh, as you wish. These children do not demand our company. Go, Gabriel. Give your bride a, a gift of moonlight. Come, Evangeline. Good evening to you, sir. Good night, my child. I do not like that man. His eyes are as cold as iron. You are trembling, my love. Why is he here? Why does a British captain want to speak with my father? Look, in the bay. A fleet of ships. A dozen of them. They are warships. Gabriel, the moonlight gleams on the cannons. When did they come? On the cover of night. It is evil, Gabriel. I am afraid. <laughs> Please, for four days now we have asked ourselves why do these strange vessels lie at anchor in our harbor? Today we shall know. Captain Morrison has asked that the men of Grand Pre gather here in the village church that he may speak to us all. The men alone? Without our wives and families? That is the captain's request. Why are they here, good Benedict? What do they wish from us? Listen, the troops are coming ashore. Soon we will know. And after the meeting, my friends, all of you, the entire village of Grand Pre, all are invited to a feast, celebrating the betrothal of Gabriel, the blacksmith's son, to my daughter Evangeline. Be splendid! Thank you, thank you. Are all the men of the village gathered here? We are all here, Captain. Lieutenant? Let the portals of the church be closed. Oh, no. No. Silence! A state of war exists between France and England. War? And the people of this colony are deemed to be enemies of the British crown. Therefore, I am commanded to confiscate your dwellings and your property. And you yourselves, as prisoners of war, shall be transported by the ships in your harbor to other lands. You will tear us from our homes? They are no longer your homes, sir. You are prisoners of the crown. We will, we will, not, be we will not obey your king's command. We will fight to keep our homes and the farms we till. Come, ye men of Grand Pre. We will defy the tyrant. Yes, we will defy the portals. Open wide the door. Unbar that door. This useless door. You are prisoners, all of you, and will remain here without food or water until a more peaceable spirit descends upon you. Outrage! Tyrant! Deceive us! We will not hey. do this. We will not hey. do this to us. What madness has seized you, my children? Peace, my friends. Hear the words of Father Felician. Have you so soon forgotten all lessons of love and forgiveness? This is the house of the Prince of Peace. And would you profane it with violence and hatred? Let us repeat the prayer of the Master. O oh, Father in heaven, forgive them. Oh, they know not Long in the house of my father, the cloth had been spread on the table. 
There stood the bread for the feast and the honey fragrant with wildflowers. Over the darkening fields, I walked to the gloom of the churchyard. All was silent within, and in vain at the door and the windows, I stood and I listened. Gabriel, Gabriel. But no answer came from the graves of the dead, nor the gloomier grave of the living. Slowly at length I returned to the tenantless house of my father. Empty and drear was each room, and haunted with phantoms of terror. In the dead of the night I heard the disconsolate rain fall. Keenly the lightning flashed, and the voice of the echoing thunder told me that God was in heaven and governed the world he created. Four times the sun had risen and set, and now, on the fifth day, we came, as the captain commanded, the Acadian women and children, driving in ponderous wagons our household goods to the seashore. Move along now. Get ready to board ship. Gabriel! Gabriel! Evangeline! Evangeline! Oh, my love. Oh, how weary you look, how pale. Prayer alone has sustained us. Oh, be of good cheer, my dear one. For if we love one another, nothing, nothing can harm us. You there, get into this boat. I'm coming with you, Gabriel. No more room. Wait for the next boat. No! You cannot separate us. We're engaged to be married. Prisoners of war will do as they are commanded. Evangeline, we'll find each other, Evangeline. Goodbye, my dearest one. Not goodbye. Farewell, Gabriel. Farewell. Just a moment, we will return to the second act of Evangeline, starring Joan Fontaine. How many of the friends on your Christmas card list have you seen in the past two months? The past year? Some, perhaps, you haven't seen in five years. And this once-a-year Christmas greeting is your only contact with them. Yet these seldom-seen friends are often the dearest ones on our entire list and help make Christmas the wonderful season it is then doesn't it seem only the gracious thing to do to make sure that the Christmas card you send truly represents you? You at your best, expressing your Christmas wishes in a beautiful manner, reflecting your good taste in a way all can appreciate. That's what you can do if you make sure the card you select is a Hallmark card. Whether you choose from the Hallmark album and have your name imprinted, whether you select from the many Hallmark boxed collections, or whether you prefer individual cards from the Hallmark display counters, you can be sure your card will be received with the added pleasure reserved for things we value. Because like sterling on silver, that hallmark on the back of a card is a sign of quality, telling your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Evangeline, starring Joan Fontaine. <laughs> So into separate boats the Acadian lovers were carried, and on a falling tide the freighted vessel set sail, bearing a nation with all its household goods into exile. Scattered on separate coasts the Acadians landed, some to the shores of the north and some to the southern savannas. Friendless, homeless, hopeless, they wandered from city to city. Among them was seen at last a maiden of reverent spirit, seeking the face that had smiled on her searching the faces of strangers for the smile of the one who had loved her. Gabriel? Gabriel Lajeunesse? Have you seen him? He was with Basil the blacksmith, and both have gone to the prairies. But where? Where in the prairies? Ask to the west.
I beg you to try to remember for the sake of old times in Acadia. When did you see him and where? A year ago it was, or more. He passed this way bound for the lowlands of Louisiana. But what was his destination? Did he name a village, a city? The only name that he uttered was the whispered name of Evangeline. Felicia. Evangeline, my dear child. I look into your face, good father, and I seem to see the meadows of Grand Pre. Not as you saw them in summer, but touched with the autumn frost. Your father, good Benedict, is he well? Acadia was his heart. How long could he live with it taken from him? I'm sorry, my child. But Gabriel, your husband, he comforts you? Oh, father... The marriage vows have never been spoken. What? I have not seen my Gabrielle since we were parted on the seashore. My love is wasted in air, having no soul it can cling to. Talk not of wasted affection. Affection never was wasted. My daughter, if it does not enrich the heart of another, its waters returning back to their springs like the rain shall fill them full of refreshment. That which the fountain sends forth returns again to the fountain. Father Felicia, will you help me find Gabrielle? I cannot turn back from my labor of love. Where my heart is gone, there follows my hand and my footstep. I will go with you, my child. Together with heavenly guidance, we will accomplish your work of affection. Into the swift Mississippi floated our cumbrous boat. Soon we were lost in a maze, where the towering boughs of the cypress met in an arch overhead. My heart was sustained by a vision that beckoned beyond through the moonlight. Through these shadowy aisles had Gabriel wandered before me, and every stroke of the oar now brought him nearer and nearer. Something says in my heart that Gabriel's soul is near me. Is it a foolish dream? Trust to thy heart, my child. Gabriel truly is near you. Do you know, Father? Not far away to the southward are the towns of Saint-Maur and Saint-Martin. There the long wandering bride shall be given at last to her bridegroom. Gabriel gone. Only today he departed. Your boats must have passed in the night on the river. Gabriel. Foolish lad. He had become so moody and restless, longing for his promised bride that I sent him away. Where? Where did you send him? Up the Indian trails to the Ozarks, hunting for furs and for beaver. Be of good cheer, Evangeline. We will follow the fugitive lover. Oh, Gabriel, my beloved. Are you so near? And yet I cannot behold you. Are you so near? And yet your voice does not reach me. Patience, my child. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Day after day, with our Indian guides, we traveled the forest, followed his flying steps, and thought each day to overtake him. There. There is the smoke of his campfire, clear in the morning air. But at nightfall, when we reached the place, we found only embers and ashes. <laughs> You will never find him. Why do you say that? I know. 
I know. How do you know? What, what tribe are you? I am of the Shawnee people. And there is a legend among us of an Indian maiden as foolish as you are. Foolish? Am I foolish? Foolish as the bride of Maui's. What happened to her? She died in anguish. By starlight, she pledged herself to Maui's, the bridegroom of snow. But in the hot sunrise, her snowman vanished, flowing slowly into the waters below the earth. How could she find him who was not? Am I pursuing a phantom? Like Maui's, the vanishing bridegroom, is it endless, the trail? With no lover, no love at the ending. Thus have the long, sad years flowed on, till at last I came to this delightful land, which is washed by the Delaware waters. Guarding in sylvan shades the name of Penn, the Apostle. Good even to thee, Sister Evangeline. I thank thee, sir. God bless thee. Something at least there is in the friendly streets of this city. Something that speaks to my heart and leaves me no longer a stranger. My ear is pleased with the friendly thee and thou of the Quakers, for it recalls the past, the old Acadian country where all men were equal and all were brothers and sisters. The twelfth hour and all is well. The twelfth hour and all is well. This is the year of the plague. The year of the plague and the pestilence. Night after night I have worked in the house of the Sisters of Mercy, moistening the feverish lip and cooling the brow of the stricken. Water. I pray. <coughs> bring me water. Patience, patience. I bring you cool water. Here, let me raise your head, my friend. <gasps> Gabriel, my beloved. Evangeline. Still stands the forest primeval. And still the love that it sheltered sleeps in my heart. Deep in my heart is his image, clothed in the beauty of love and youth, as I long to behold him. Into my thoughts of Gabriel, time enters not, for it is not. As from the mountain's top, the rainy mists of the morning roll away, and afar we behold the landscape below us. So fell the mists from my mind. And I saw the world far below me, dark no longer, but all illumined with love. And the pathway which I had climbed so far, lying smooth and fair in the distance. For thy merciful bounties and blessings, O oh, Father in heaven, I thank thee. John Fontaine and James Hilton will return in a moment. Designed to express your Christmas wishes in a beautiful manner, and yet priced to fit even the most limited budget. That's how you'll describe the many different Hallmark Christmas cards you can buy in convenient boxed collections. Many of these Hallmark boxes are priced at only one dollar. 
So you see, it isn't necessary to buy expensive cards in order to be sure your cards have that hallmark on the back denoting quality. In fact, some boxes as low as $1 have 22 and 25 hallmark Christmas cards in them. Then there are other boxed collections with designs by Norman Rockwell, Winston Churchill, Grandma Moses, Herb Olson, and other outstanding Hallmark Gallery artists. All are beautifully made in the Hallmark tradition of craftsmen who for years have designed cards with but one thought in mind. To give you a card you'll be proud to send, and one that will be received with pleasure. So remember, look for Hallmark on the cover of the box if you want your friends to see that Hallmark on the back of the card you send. The Hallmark that tells them you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you for being with us tonight, Joan. You gave us a memorable and moving Evangeline. I'm glad you liked it, Mr. Hilton. It's always been a favorite of mine. In fact, when I heard you were doing the story on Hallmark Playhouse tonight, I cut short my trip to come back to Hollywood. Well, we're certainly glad you did, Joan. Tell me, did you have a nice trip in the East? Oh, indeed I did. And I saw something that reminded me of all of you. What was that? A sign in the greeting card department reminding everyone that to arrive overseas in time for Christmas, cards should be mailed by November 15th. And I said to myself, I'm sure Frank Goss will be reminding our Hallmark Playhouse listeners of that tonight. Well, as a matter of fact, I was planning on doing that very thing myself. Christmas cards, and in fact all Christmas mail for servicemen and women, should be sent by November 15th if sent regular mail, and by December 1st if sent air mail. And to our listeners, while we hope your cards will have that hallmark on the back, the important thing is that the men and women overseas receive lots of Christmas mail from home. You'll do your part, won't you? Thank you, Joan. I'm sure our Hallmark Playhouse audience will. And now I'd like to tell you about next week's story. It's a famous book, and we've chosen a rising and exciting star. Our story will be that wonderful adventure classic, Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And to play the leading role, Hollywood's young romantic star, Louis Jourdain. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was dramatized by Lawrence and Lee. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> carry enough to send the very best. Joan Fontaine can currently be seen in the Paramount picture, Darling, How Could You?